learn more about how a lack of attention at the wheel is causing an increase in teen crashes. The Model UN students will be debating resolutions dealing with everything from economic issues to social equality. Coming up. Welcome to Winthrop Close Up. My name is Brandon Great. Distracted driving has long been a problem for teen drivers, but recently things have taken a wrong turn. I was there to get the full report. The video you are watching shows teen drivers who are distracted while at the wheel of their cars. According to AAA, this video analysis discovers that distraction was a prime factor in nearly 6 out of 10 moderate to severe teen crashes. 60% of crashes that involve teens are a result from distracted driving, so that's horrible. And when you look at the fact that um, 4 out of the last 6 seconds before a crash involving a teen, they're in their phone. That's scary and we've got to do something about it. 12% of teen crashes stem from cell phone use, which has authorities cracking down on texting while driving laws. In fact, 45 states ban drivers from texting while driving, and one local attorney believes that this new law will prevent teens from cell phone use at the wheel. We've seen more attention being paid to a problem that isn't new, but there's a lot more attention being paid to it now. And that's a good thing because hopefully the law and the education will have a deterring factor. According to AAA, some of the most common forms of distraction that lead up to teen crashes include use of a cell phone, grooming, turning the radio dial, even interacting with other passengers in the car. Parents can also help the cause by being role models for their children while operating a vehicle. If they would just realize that when you get in a car, the one thing you have to do is drive a car and to try and keep your teen safe and everybody safe on the road, put that phone down. It's not that important. The choice is yours. Don't risk your life over something that is 100% preventable. Life has no redial. Stay off the phone. For more statistics on distracted driving and teen drivers, visit carolinas.aaa.com and search the Drive Safely tab. Winthrop may face an exploratory audit if Rock Hill State Legislative Representative John King gets his way. King, along with six other Democrats, sent a request to the state's Audit Council to complete a full review of Winthrop's finances. The concern, King says, is over the university's use of reserve funds. Acting President Deborah Boyd had this to say. But when we heard about it, it was a bit of a surprise, um, particularly because um, we have always been forthcoming with uh, all of the information that we have about our finances um, and because it focused on that, we were just a little surprised by that. 1997 was the last year that Winthrop was audited by the state legislature. Students from all across the South came together for a Model UN conference. Here at Winthrop, reporter Michaela Dunbar has more. Behind me in Tillman Auditorium, high school students from all across South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia are coming together for Winthrop's 39th annual Model UN conference. Delegates, if you could please return to your seats. High school and college comes together and high school students, along with their college representative, get to pretend to be a country and where they, in, a, in essence, vote like the actual United Nations country would vote. Um, and they represent that country to the best of their ability using all the knowledge that they have at hand. At first I was nervous, but once I got into the swing of things, I think I began to enjoy it a lot more and start learning. Um, I think other students should try Model UN because it presents an opportunity for learning and sharpening your research skills, really, and plus it's just fun. I work closely with the 261 delegates, which are our secretariat members, and we're responsible for chairing and wrapping the conference. Behind the scenes, I've been able to work closely with them to teach them how to chair properly, how to run committee, and how to be good advisors to our delegations. Everyone who's not voting in favor of this resolution should feel ashamed of themselves. I know that in the increasing age of technology, a lot of younger kids aren't really good with speech or debate anymore. They don't know how to talk, they use their phone to, phones too much. So that I hope this encourages them to be able to talk in front of large groups and improve their speaking ability in crowds. Students will be learning debate, logic, and public speaking skills. At the end of the conference, they'll be announcing the awards. This has been Michaela Dunbar, Winthrop Close-Up. 
the university already has plans in the works for next year's conference. There is something in the air around Winthrop's campus, and it's not the scent of fresh flowers. Reporter Gabrielle Franklin set out to uncover what is making our campus stink. It's springtime and Winthrop's campus is in full bloom. It's a beautiful sight, but some say that beauty comes with a price. It smells pretty awful. On a scale of 1 to 10, the thickness of the mulch is probably an 8.9. Landscapers have been laying down an organic fertilizer that experts say is more beneficial than other landscaping mulch. This lasts longer than pine needles, a lot cheaper, and it's a lot better for the environment. Trees, shrubbery, more of a natural thing. While most students say that they understand the mulch helps keep our campus beautiful, they say that they still would prefer not to smell it. This mulch is pretty. It's pretty around the trees. It's stinky pretty. It's kind of a big distraction when you're walking to class, you know, remembering notes and thinking of things that you got to get done in the day and then a, a wind breaks out and it just wafts you right in the face. But experts say not much can be done about the smell. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Gabrielle Franklin went through close up. Has the smell around campus bothered you? Share your thoughts with us on Twitter at Winthrop Close Up. The 2016 race for the White House has made its way to Rock Hill. Find out what brought Senator Ted Cruz to our area coming up. Special Olympics are in Rock Hill. Find out how people of all ages enjoy some healthy competition up next on Winthrop Close Up. Welcome back. Now we're going to bring you the top headline stories of the week. Presidential hopeful Ted Cruz recently made a visit to Rock Hill. Cruz spoke to a standing room only crowd at a town hall meeting held by the York County Republican Party. The Texas senator says that he plans to spend a good bit of time in the Palmetto State. We're going to spend a lot of time here in South Carolina. You know, I have to say as a Texan, Texas and South Carolina share a lot in common. We've got a lot of common values, a lot of cultural similarities. We're southern states. Uh, we've got tremendous love of our liberty, of, of, of our gun rights, of our military, of our constitution. Cruz was the first Republican to announce his candidacy, but he is now alongside Marco Rubio and Rand Paul, who will also be looking for the nomination from the GOP. The votes are in, and Winthrop has a new student body president and vice president. Ray McKetty will serve as the next president and student representative to the board of trustees. The election went into a runoff after McKetty and Alex Nolan fell 26 votes short of receiving the 51% of Winthrop's votes required by the Winthrop bylaws. McKetty said that he, works, that he looks forward to serving Winthrop students. I think it's going to be a great opportunity. I can't wait to see what what we get to do next year. I'm really looking forward to working with Dr. Mahoney, too. Um, I'm, I think Winthrop needs some stability. Duties for McKetty and his vice president will include heading up student allocations committees and integrating a new president into the Winthrop community. Their term will begin on July 1st. Next, let's check in with Matthew Cray for our feature stories. Matthew? Thank you, Brandon. While elections have been occurring on campus, the Special Olympics have been taking place off campus to bring the Rock Hill community closer together. Here at Cherry Park in Rock Hill, South Carolina at the Special Olympics where people of all ages compete for the gold. Feet dashed across the ground with heads held high as the Special Olympics began in Rock Hill. Each event ended with a medal ceremony for the winners. Okay, so the Special Olympics is York, Chester, and Lancaster counties. And the Special Olympics is just big games that we put on and the Olympians get to compete and then they get medals. Alex Wyatt is a 19-year-old student from Clover High School. Wyatt told us why he likes competing in the Special Olympics. The champion to take home of the, uh, is um, the medal. As the Olympians competed in their respective events, there were plenty of fans present to cheer them on. I wore these different colored wigs for the kids. And uh, the kids love them. These kids are awesome. Every one of us has got a special need. Every one of us has got a special gift, and these kids are special gifts. Here's what Winthrop's Big Stuff had to say about the Special Olympics. 
Throughout the day, good sportsmanship was shown by all, and some were happy even if they did not come in first. Anna McCowan summed up the day quite nicely. The Special Olympics are awesome. Over 1,200 people participated in this special day. That's all we have for features today. Let's check back in with Brandon at the News Center. Thanks, Matthew. While some people were enjoying a beautiful day at the Special Olympics, others have been very concerned over the recent measles outbreak. The outbreak began in the happiest place on Earth, Disneyland, and spread across the country. Some parents have refused to get their children vaccinated because they believe that vaccines could cause developmental disorders like autism. Experts say that the claim is simply not true. You look at pictures of kids uh, and videos and the, the kids are absolutely miserable. So we have a way to prevent that. And I, I just think anyone who chooses not to have their children vaccinated for measles is really making a, an erroneous decision. Autism Speaks recently denounced the claim that vaccines cause autism. They urge all children to be fully vaccinated. A recent study has shown that opening your window before you go to bed to get fresh air could improve your sleep. Air has a cooling effect. A slight drop in body temperature can prompt tiredness, and there are a lot of positive associations between fresh air and relaxation, which therefore makes us comfortable and sleepy. Long live the open window. What do Picasso, Van Gogh, and Bodhi the Goat have in common? They're all accomplished painters. Stay tuned to check out some unusual art. While his name's not Vincent, this goat is a regular Van Gogh, or should I say Van Goat. Four-year-old Bodhi is a painting goat. To see a, a goat actually hold a paintbrush in his mouth and paint, um, and he has some accuracy with it uh, and some talent, yeah, that's, that's unique. If you want to own a piece of Bodhi's work, his canvases are being sold by the New Mexico Biopark Society and retailing for around $40. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Winter Close-Up. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Winter Close-Up to stay up to date on campus news. See you next week.